Pokemon Go is finally out, allowing fans everywhere to finally live out the dream promised in that legendary teaser video of being a Pokemon trainer. Well, I mean kind of, this is a far cry from, well this, but it's here. It's available on both iOS and Android devices, and here are 10 things you need to know when you start a new game of Pokemon Go. At number 10, get a grip on the tracking system and use it to your advantage. Neontic hasn't given players many answers to the multitude of questions players have, but we have learned how many systems work. Or at least sort of. Learn how the tracking system works in the bottom right hand corner of the main map screen. This will help you find the Pokemon that you want. The more footprints, the further the distance. Treat the Pokemon tracker like a 9x9 grid where the top left is the closest and the bottom right is the furthest. This is how you can get a grip on walking towards the Pokemon that you want. Go straight in any direction to start. If the Pokemon moves down one slot, it might be a fluke. Be patient. If it dips down two or three slots, you're going the wrong way. You'll double your chances of the Pokemon showing up near you. The tracker must be open for this to work, many players have figured out. It's a weird and vague system, but it helps. Number nine, catching Pokemon. Catching Pokemon will obviously be your top priority when you start up Pokemon Go for the first time, and as such, it's really important to know the tips that come along with catching Pokemon especially since you only have a limited number of Pokeballs. The little circle at the center of the screen is not only an indicator of timing, but it also lets you know how difficult this Pokemon will be to catch. A green circle is what you're hoping for, as it means that it will be a fairly easy catch. Yellow is a step up, but still very manageable. Orange and red are very difficult captures, and chances are you're going to want to use a better Pokeball or risk wasting a bunch on a failed capture. As far as timing is concerned, you should try to throw the ball when the circle is at its smallest. That will give you the best chance of capturing the Pokemon. I'd also recommend using your index finger as opposed to your thumb to increase your accuracy. Number 8, Pokestops. Unlike Pokemon, Pokestops will not cause your phone to vibrate when nearby. So you actually have to actively plan to visit a Pokestop or actively know when you're near one because in order to reap the benefits of them, you need to be close by. When you spot a blue Pokestop on the map, you can touch it to reveal the name of the location along with a picture of it that can be spun. If you're too far away, spinning the picture will do nothing, but if you get within range, you can spin the circle to get a number of items including Pokeballs, Eggs, Potions, and Revives. Once a Pokestop has been used, it will turn purple and you won't be able to get any more items from it until it refreshes in about 5 minutes. Just walk a few blocks, come back, and you should be able to grab items from it again. If you happen to live next to a Pokestop, psh, you lucked out. You can just keep on checking back and getting items and EXP every few minutes. Lucky bastard. Number 7, Powering Up Your Pokemon Pokemon Go is not just about catching Pokemon, it's about raising them as well. Your Pokemon's strength is determined by their CP or combat points. Essentially, think of this like levels. The higher the CP, the higher level your Pokemon is. You can increase CP by spending Stardust, which is obtained simply by catching more Pokemon. Of course, you can also evolve your Pokemon, but unlike the actual games, this isn't tied to a Pokemon's level or a special stone. Instead, evolving Pokemon is done by getting enough of that specific Pokemon's candy. Every time you catch a Pokemon, you'll gain some candy for it. But you can also gain extra candy by capturing extra Pokemon of that same type and then transferring them to Professor Willow. Just make sure that you check the stats of the Pokemon you want to transfer, because once they're gone, they're gone for good. Why would you go through the trouble of powering up your Pokemon, you ask? Well... Number 6. Challenging Gyms Like in the games, gyms are where the toughest trainers in the region gather. Unlike the games, you can actually become a gym leader yourself if your Pokemon are strong enough. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Gyms are those large red, blue, or yellow landmarks on your map that you won't even be able to interact with until your trainer level 5. Once you are level 5 though, and you're able to choose what team you want to join, you'll also be able to either challenge opposing gyms or train at your own. If you attack a gym controlled by another team, you'll have to start at the bottom battling the weakest Pokemon placed inside the gym and work your way all the way up the ladder until you get to the gym leader. Every time you win against the gym leader, you'll knock down that gym's prestige until eventually you'll kick them out altogether. If you have the strongest Pokemon at a gym your team controls, you can actually even become the gym leader. On the other side of that, if you train at a gym you control, defeating the Pokemon placed inside, you'll actually be able to improve its prestige and make the gym better equipped to fend off challengers. It's a pretty cool, almost turf war style of conflict 
conflict and it opens it up for the truly hardcore Pokemon Go players to get something out of their time spent by potentially being able to become gym leader. Number 5, Data and Battery Usage as cool as Pokemon Go is, it really takes a toll on your battery. Fortunately, the game has an in-game battery save option that can be turned on and off. And if battery is a concern, you're definitely going to want to know about it because it manages to keep on all the important features like GPS and notifications when Pokemon are nearby while making it so that the app drains a lot less battery while it's on. Data usage is also a potential concern for people with small data plans. According to player testing, the game will use up about 0.01 gigabytes an hour, which may not sound like a whole lot, and to be honest it's not, but it's still worth keeping track of when added to your already existing data usage habits. Number 4, let's talk about eggs. As you visit more and more Pokestops, chances are you're going to start getting more eggs that you know what to do with. Similar to how they worked with the games, Pokemon eggs will hatch once you walk a certain number of kilometers. That being said, you still need to place the egg inside an incubator, one of which will be provided to you at the start. In order to get more to incubate multiple eggs at once, you're going to need to buy more incubators at the store. And that's pretty much it. The amount of distance you need to walk varies from egg to egg, with some hatching after 2 kilometers, others after 5 kilometers and more. Number 3, The Poke Shop Pokemon Go is a free app and you can do all the basic things like catching Pokemon, visiting Pokestops and reaping the rewards, and while Pokeballs aren't free, you get a ton of them at the start of the game and more whenever you level up. That being said, those who are willing to cough up some real life money are definitely going to find themselves able to make a lot more progress a lot faster. Players can buy Poke Coins, which will enable them to buy Poke Balls, incenses to make Pokemon come to you for a limited amount of time, the aforementioned incubators to speed up the egg hatching process, lucky eggs that will double your EXP game for a limited amount of time, and lure modules that will attract Pokemon to Pokestops, with other people also being able to benefit from the effect. Ultimately, it follows the usual tactic of free-to-play phone games of catering to those who have more money than they have time, which uh, is kind of a bummer since it means that those who spend more money are likely going to be the ones heading up the gyms. And number two, what about trading? Back when Pokemon Go was first announced, it was teased to have a system where players could trade Pokemon with each other, but unfortunately, as of launch, that system does not exist. There is no trading at the moment in Pokemon Go, but considering that it was such a prominent part of that announcement trailer, one would have to believe that it will be part of a future update. Because seriously, a game about collecting Pokemon without the ability to trade those Pokemon? And finally, number one, seriously you guys, be careful when playing this game. It's great that a game like Pokemon Go is able to encourage people to get out of their house and walk around outside and actually rewards them for doing so, but like the game says, remember to be alert at all times. There has been a fake news story making its rounds around social media about a kid getting stabbed because he wandered into a bad neighborhood while being too focused on Pokemon Go. And it's a fake story, but situations like that are certainly plausible when it comes to this game. It almost feels like there's a clock counting down to the first instance of a kid who gets hit by a car while near a busy intersection. Please, please, please don't let that happen. And those are 10 things to know about Pokemon Go. The game is definitely in a super rough state right now due to the server stress of its launch because of its popularity, but there's a really cool idea at the core of this game and like I said before, it's pretty awesome to have an app that gives hardcore Pokemon fans an extra reason to get up, walk around, and explore new places. Thanks for watching this video and hey, if you enjoyed it, why not do us a huge favor and drop us a like. If you're not already, subscribing is a great idea because we here at Game Ranks put out awesome videos every single day. Thanks once again, and I'll see you next time.